Hey everybody, Darren here with Renaissance Coders. Thanks for joining us for another C Sharp tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about inheritance. Well, inheritance is actually pretty easy to understand conceptually. If you think about a family structure, we have a parent with some children, and their children can have children, and we find the same relationship with inheritance and programming. So simply put, programmatically speaking, inheritance is a pattern. It's a way of organizing your code, and it doesn't necessarily make your program run faster, but it does organize instructions and requirements. It abstracts the complexities of classes. It enables method and member sharing between classes. It allows method overriding between classes. And finally, but not least, it allows for the substitution of logic and functionality in classes where we may not exactly understand what's going on uh, within the details of that class, but we're still able to write processing logic into it. So at first glance, it may still be unclear as to why any of this is important, but we're going to dive into an example in Unity 3D to understand uh, the power of inheritance and why it is so useful. So we're gonna be using Unity 3D uh, since my background is in that engine. So if you're not coming from a game's background, that's okay. You can still certainly benefit from uh, understanding what inheritance is. So let's go ahead and get into the details of this project. So we have two classes in front of us. We have Ogre on the left and Undead on the right. And the truth about these two classes is that they do the exact same thing. You'll notice at the top of the right, in our class definition, we have enemy on the right-hand side of the colon instead of mono behavior. This indicates that enemy probably has a lot of the same logic that Ogre does. And since I'm inheriting with Undead, I don't need to write nearly as much code to implement the same thing that Ogre does. So I'd like to go back to Unity and show you that these two classes are going to implement the same exact behavior. So in Unity, we have Undead, which has the Undead component, and we have Ogre, which has the Ogre component. And when I run this, they're going to patrol and when they see each other, they're going to run to each other and start attacking. They both have slightly different attack speeds with slightly different damage outputs. So one of them is going to kill the other first. And when the, uh, when the last one standing uh, kills the opponent, he'll start patrolling around. Well, now that we've shown that, we should take a look at what is actually happening with the enemy class. So we can see that enemy is actually almost a direct copy of Ogre. Now the reason I did this was because I just wanted to show uh, how easy it would be to modify the specialization aspect of various types of enemies by using a base class. And this class is simply on its own. And imagine if I wanted to create another type of enemy from this class. If I didn't use inheritance, I would have to copy the entire class and copy the contents into another class called wizard or some other type of enemy. And then we just end up with a bunch of redundant code. And it's even a bigger problem because what if I later decide to modify some enemy code and that needs to be true for all enemies, then I would have to go inside every enemy script and modify the same thing. So with this sort of centralized approach, we only need to modify uh, the base class to modify all of the general, uh, all of the generalized functionality and logic of the subclasses. Now I want to talk about some generalization a little bit more. Uh, if we look at our enemy class, we have the I enemy behavior implemented. Uh, we can see that after the comma after mono behavior. So what this means and how this class definition reads is that we have an abstract class called enemy. And we'll talk about abstract a little bit later. And enemy inherits mono behavior, which is a uh, Unity 3D engine base class or parent class. And enemy also implements the iEnemy behavior interface. So let's look at the iEnemy behavior interface. And all it is is a list of functions. And we can think of this as just a set of rules or requirements. And as such, anything that borrows these instructions must implement all of them. In other words, if my enemy class doesn't 
uh, implement attack enemy, as you can see down here, if it doesn't implement that method, the compiler is going to throw an error. To show this, I'm going to add a new method to my rules or my requirement list. I'll call it method, test method. And if we go back to Unity, we'll see the error that gets thrown. So back in Unity, we can see enemy does not implement interface member inmbbehavior.test method. And this is what I was talking about. Unless we add that test method uh, method to enemy, that compiler is going to keep screaming at us. Another interesting fact about that is if I add test method in this way, I'll still have an error. The compiler is going to tell me that the best compatible match for test method needs to be marked as public, which indicates that this needs to be a public void test method, and that's the only way it'll work. So this is one of the disadvantages of using interfaces, but just like all design patterns in programming languages, uh, some of you might be aware of, is that they come with advantages and they also come with disadvantages. The advantages here are that we have a centralized approach to defining requirements for all of the classes that implement INME behavior. And if we want to change those rules, all we have to do is change them right here, and none of our classes will be able to disobey those rules. The downside being that we have to make the, me the method public and that leaves it open to access from outside classes. So it's up to you if you want to use this method, but I thought it was worth the mention. I'm going to get rid of test method in my enemy class and in my interface. So earlier I mentioned that inheritance abstracts the complexities of classes. And you can see that here. This is what I was talking about. Our subclass, our child class, is only 12 lines long. And we only care about overriding one method. So that's the abstraction aspect. Undead doesn't need to know the details of enemy. And it can still implement everything that enemy does. So that's the abstraction aspect. And that's why inheritance is such an uh, attractive design pattern. Now, inheritance also enables us to share method and member variables between classes. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at our enemy class, we have some public members and we have some protected members and then we have some private members. And the public members are accessible outside of our class. Uh, and of course, also within our subclasses, the protected variables are only accessible within our child classes. Okay, so that's where we're sharing member variables and where we share member, uh, where we where we share the functions is start, update, and basically all of these functions are shared except for the private ones. And that's exactly how the undead uh, component was able to work in the first part of this video when I was demoing the sort of basic AI. Is this because it's actually borrowing these functions now the interesting thing is that we can override these functions if we mark them with virtual or abstract. And I'll show you an abstract uh, method in just a moment. Now you can see over here in our undead class we are overriding find new position. So let's look at what that's actually doing in our base class. In our base class we have that marked as virtual, which again gives us the opportunity to override that in our subclasses. So if you mark a method is virtual, you're expecting uh, the ability to be able to override that functionality in subclasses. And so all this means is, uh, at first glance, is that all of our enemies should have different movement patterns, or they should have different ways of finding new positions. So as a base, our enemies find positions by finding a random value on the X and Z from negative 5 to 5. Now that's actually a direct copy of my subclass, but I have the ability to change it. So if I change that to say that they can only move within 4 units instead of 10, then we can go back to Unity and see that my uh, undead object only patrols within a smaller region. So I'm actually going to get rid of the ogre for now so that they don't actually initiate attacks. And we can see the small patrol zone of our undead guy. 
And you won't see him go much further out than he already has. So just like that, we've created an enemy that has a different patrolling pattern. Now this gets even more interesting. We have the ability to insert logic into different parts within our class. Our subclasses have control over that. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. It's of course up to the way that we design our, our base class, which at times can be pretty tricky. But let's create an example of a method that's going to be shared between all of our enemies that we create. I came up with one that I thought was interesting, which was a method that uh, provided functionality for whenever an enemy got to low health. So we could say public void, or I'm sorry, public abstract void, run low health behavior. Now if our health is low, it indicates that we already have found an enemy because he's attacking us. And with that, we don't need to run any of this code. So what I can say is if health, and I remind you this is in my, my uh, base class, we'll say if health is less than 20, I'll say it less than or equal to 20, then I want to run low health behavior and return. Now one thing I forgot was that abstract methods can't have contents. We can't add functionality to this. And if this method isn't overridden, we'll get an error. So as we can see in our subclass, we aren't overriding run low health behavior. Let's go to Unity and see the error that we get. So we can see we get undead does not implement inherited abstract member enemy.run low health behavior. And we actually don't get that with virtual methods. That's because virtual methods have potential to have logic in them while abstract methods don't. And if we go back to Unity, or if we go back to our editor, we can see that we're calling the abstract member, but what if that actually wasn't, if run, if run low health behavior didn't have any code within it, then the compiler wouldn't really know what to do. And that's why we get that error because the definition of abstract functions are used with a semicolon. We can't actually add direct functionality in there, which is why our subclasses must add functionality to them. Now the other interesting thing to keep in mind here is that we're literally inserting code into our base class from our subclass, which is unusual behavior and it's also very neat, but again, it makes designing our base classes fairly tricky. So let's go ahead and go to our undead class and say public override void, run low health behavior. Now I have some ideas for this. What I want to do is create a regenerate method. That's going to regenerate our health over time. And I also want to have a runaway method. This is going to give our AI completely different behavior from our ogre. And I'm not even adding that much code to the, the subclass, but it still gives us a wide range of flexibility to add different personalities to our characters. So the first thing I want to do is create regenerate. And then I'll create runaway. And these are methods that I'm not expecting to have in any of my other uh, enemies, which is why I'm keeping them localized within my undead class. So regenerate is going to regenerate health over time. So I need to create a health timer. I also should create a float for, uh, let's say, regen amount. So how much health am I going to regenerate each time? I'll set that to five. And then we want to say, how, how often are we going to regen? So I'll say float regen speed. We'll say that's equal to 0.5 seconds. So every 0.5 seconds, when I have low health and I'm running away, my undead character is going to regen five health. So in regenerate, what we'll say is regen's regen, or I'm sorry, health timer, health timer plus equals time dot delta time. And I'll say if health timer is greater than regen speed, then health timer should be set to zero. 
and I'll increase my health. I'll say health plus equals region amount. Now I also have an image, which you may have seen already, above my enemies health bar. And I have that in my base class. Since it's public, I can access it. I didn't want this to be protected because I needed to actually uh, drag that image component onto this from the inspector view. But I can still say over here, health bar dot fill amount, health bar dot fill amount equals health divided by max health. So this will be a value from zero to one. And that's going to set my health bar. So regenerate is done, now run away. Well, run away is pretty easy. We can actually just come down to uh, travel to position. This method is similar. And what this does is it rotates my enemy or my character to a certain position or certain orientation. And then I just move my character forward on his local forward by speed. And I actually want to increase the speed when he's running away by two. Now the only difference here is that I'm saying goal position minus uh, target or transform dot position. Now, if you know anything about vector math, you'll know that getting the direction vector is attained by going from the target minus the current. So target minus current position will get you a vector pointing from your current position to your target. So really all I wanna do is reverse this math and say to run away from my enemy, I wanna say transform.position minus goal position. Goal position, when we actually have a target, when we actually have an enemy, goal position is being set to the enemy's position. And that's all being done within this logic that I haven't really described. Um, but the logic is pretty simple and this video is mostly about inheritance. Uh, but that's the way this is going to work. So this will actually turn the character directly away from the enemy and this will actually move the uh, enemy uh, forward and he'll be moving at speed times two. And the reason I did speed times two is because you know, we can assume that since he has low health, he has a bit of an adre adrenaline rush and he's trying to run away. Uh, another run low health behavior that we might have is something like a rage behavior where his damage increases and maybe he also regenerates, I don't know. Um, just an idea of the flexibility you could have with this type of inheritance setup. Okay, now what I did as a reminder is I conducted an override on an abstract member, which is literally inserting my subclass code into my base class code, which is really cool, it's really neat. Uh, but again, it is a bit of a design challenge. But let's go back to Unity and see how this actually works. Okay, so here we are back in Unity. I wanted to make sure that I reactivate my ogre and let's see how this looks so what we expect to see is gray which is the undead when his health gets to a certain point he's going to start running away uh, but you'll notice that whenever his health regenerates he'll actually be able to turn around and start attacking again okay let's start this and see if it works So remember, Gray is undead, so he'll hopefully get to a point where he starts running away. So he, you can see him running away, stopping and attacking again. So he basically has invincibility mode right now. All right. So that's the end of the inheritance tutorial. We learned about organizing instructions with interfaces, abstracting complexities, we also talked about member and uh, method sharing between classes. We talked about overriding between classes and also substituting logic and functionality from our subclass into our base class. I hope you guys learned what you came here to learn. I thought that this might be a cool little experiment to understand inheritance. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Leave a like if you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.